Hello. Good morning, church. Welcome to SIBKL online service. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm, I'm Gilbert Wee, one of the pastors in SIBKL. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 1 to 2, verse 1, I was overjoyed when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now, at last, we stand here inside the very gates of Jerusalem. Here I am. I'm standing inside the very main century of SIBKL. And it is not the same, you know. Nothing is the same as you come into the house of the Lord and worship Him together. We are streaming live to you this morning. And uh, we want to say, you know, we just hope that you will be able to join us soon uh, for this physical service. And it is wonderful to worship together with you. But right now, you know, I'm excited to, you know, to have this service uh, this morning. So wherever you're watching from, we want to say welcome to the family. And let us know where you're watching from and put in the chat room and say, hello, I'm from you know, from Hong Kong or from uh, Singapore or from uh, Penang or from Banda Utama, you know, just put it there and we will, you know, be glad to see you in the chat room, in YouTube or in the Facebook. Now, for those who are new in our, you know, in our church, we want to welcome you to join us. And our new visitors are very, you know, we will be delighted to have you. And we say, go to the chat room and say, I'm new. And we will be, you know, uh, <coughs> connecting with you and give you a shout of love there. Today is communion weekend. And I want you to prepare yourselves and uh, get the emblems ready with some bread and uh, grape juice. And, you know, communion is very important in our Christian faith because we want to remember what the Lord has done for us and the love that He has showered upon us. And we will take communion uh, together after the praise and worship service. Now for those who have been following our pulpit series, you know, we are resuming the, start, the, the, uh, the uh, what called the preaching on the book of Revelation, on the Jesus letters to the seven churches, and uh, uh, Pastor Lee Chu will be the speaker today on this subject on the church to Tartira. Now for those uh, of us, you know, I just want you to engage in this worship this morning. So wherever you are, just put aside, you know, what, what you're doing and come and give your high praises and worship to the King because He deserves it. Amen. Come, let us pray for the service. Father God, we are so thankful that we can come to worship you. So wherever we are, we pray for your presence to fill us. Jesus, you are in our midst, as you say, when we offer and call upon you, you will draw near to us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Fill us a lot anew. Teach us to God in your word as we receive it. Help us, God, to internalize it and apply it for your glory. We commit this service to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Let's stay tuned to SIBKL News. Church. Hi, SIBKL. It is my privilege to welcome every single one of you back into the house of God. We're opening our church for a physical service on the 1st and 2nd of May, all three services. We will be following every government SOP, but can I remind all of you that when you come for our service, wear your face mask at all times. Come on, let's go. These seats are reserved specially for you. So on a Wednesday before every weekend for all our services, 
don't forget to book your tickets. If you're joining us in our services for the very first time, come and say hello to us because we have a gift specially for you. And I've got really good news for parents. Children's ministry will be opening soon, so stay tuned for more information. Come and visit us on our website for all details about our services. I'm Pastor Isaac, and I cannot wait to worship God with every single one of you. I'll see you in church. God bless. The Lord is the God of all comfort. It is stated in 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 5 that God comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may also comfort others. In difficult times, God walks alongside us and places people in our lives so that we can be sure of His presence. The Alpizo Healing Ministry will be hosting a session with Pastor Dickie Wong from PJEFC who will share deeply from this verse. Do join us and be blessed. This April, Healing and Miracle Night will be bringing in Pastor Pua Sing Tiong to share on the topic, Jesus Touched the Man. Pastor Pua is one of the founders of Sungai Wei Subang Methodist Church. At present, he continues to be active in missions, equipping and training leaders of various people groups, both local and around the world, especially in the third world countries. Come join us this coming Thursday for a time of intercession. DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. Hallelujah, Shalom, S-I-B-K-L. We are so excited to be here in the house of God. And we just want to praise the Lord. Amen. God, God inhabit the praises of His people. Hallelujah, wherever you are, let's praise the right. Praise the Lord.
Amen. That's right. Oh yes, don't let it rise. Let it rise. Let praise the Lord. Come on, church together. This is my 
burden He has every burden This is my surrender Oh yes we surrender the Lord This is my surrender Here is where I Holy, 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 holy,
we cry holy unto you. Oh, holy God. That is holy and it is mercy and great love that he has allowed us to come into this presence of holiness it's not because of what we have done it's not because of the great deeds that we have achieved but it's because of the love of God that Christ has put it all, that He says it is finished, it is done for us. And the blood of Jesus has forgiven us and it's covered us that we can come into this presence that He grant us and He says that we are holy before Him. Oh, just thank the Lord for this grace. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord of all. Oh, your love is awesome, Lord my God. Yes, Lord, your love of our condition. Bless of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of this great love that God has showered upon us. That whoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. That whoever called upon Jesus, he says that he will give us power to become the sons and the children of God. 
What a privilege, Lord, that we are. And we say thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of this great extension of God's love into our life. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, wherever you are, I just, as you engage with God, I believe that you will have the same experience of God's presence in your premise right now. In a moment, we are going to take communion together. So get ready your bread and some great juice. And we will partake it together. And this, you know, Holy, Holy Communion, as it says, is very important to our Christian faith because we want to remember what God has done for our lives and what God has provided for us to come into this family. As we come in to partake this Holy Communion, I just want to reiterate that what the Bible says, that is examine ourselves. Just take a moment to examine ourselves. If there's any wrongdoings in our life, and if all you may feel unworthy to come to partake this communion with the Lord. But the Lord says, let us come to remember Him together. And in 1 John 1 9, it allows to says, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So just do that for a moment. And Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord in the, on the same night which he was to be betrayed, he took bread and then he broke it and he gave thanks and says, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. What do we remember about the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember 2,000 years ago, He was nailed on the cross for our sins. 2,000 years ago, He was stripped, beaten, and He took 39 lashes on His back so that our curses can be broken. Our sicknesses and diseases can be restored. Remember that he took up the cross and went all the way to Calvary. And he kneeled himself onto the cross and says, It is done. Therefore, there is no more condemnation because he has settled it. Let us just pray for the bread together. Lord, we thank you for your body. We thank you, God, that every lashes that you have taken on your back, O oh Lord, all the diseases and sicknesses, you say, you will restore and make it whole. Every lashes that you have taken on your body, you say, the curses is now broken and settled. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, even as we partake it, Lord. We want to remember that you have made a way for us to be set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So wherever you are, I just want you to lay hands on the area that you're not well. Because Jesus says, he has taken all your diseases and restored you to make you whole. Just by faith, wherever you are, remove in Jesus' name the, all the curses of cancer, all the curses of stroke, 
all the curses of heart diseases in the name of Jesus every need that is brought before you right now Lord as you see the hands that are laid on each body in Jesus name I speak life into every body I speak life into the cells of the body in Jesus name restore and make it new for your glory Amen in verse 25 it says in the same manner he took the cup and after supper it says this cup is the new covenant in my book blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me we remember that he shed his blood on the cross that all our sins can be forgiven even as we stand before the Lord his blood cover us as a totonus thank you Lord that by your blood our sins are forgiven by your blood alone we can stand before you blameless holy by your blood oh Lord Jesus you can you have reconciled us to God to be part of this family of God thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen let's partake of the, the cup together Bible says, for as often as we partake of the bread and the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Hallelujah! Jesus is risen. Jesus is resurrected. And Jesus will be back soon. Amen. Let's, wherever you are, come. Let's rise up and let's sing this song together with the worship team. We cry, holy, holy, holy. of heaven and earth, Redeemer of all mankind, we thank you so much that even this morning we are reminded there is power in the blood, there is power in the blood to break through every curse, to break through every stronghold of darkness. So Lord, we stand before you giving thanks to you that we are partakers of this covenant of promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, whose blood speaks better than the blood of Abel. And today, O oh Lord God, we proclaim into every household, into every home, O oh Lord God, the power of the risen Christ, the power of the blood, to even, O oh Lord God, forgive sins, redeem lives, and to set the captives free. Father, today, we speak healing to those who are sick. We speak redemption to those who are lost. We speak, O oh Lord God, restoration to those who are depressed, O oh Lord God. That in the name of Jesus, the glory of the Lord will come upon every home, every person that is now worshipping you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. All of you, we are here physically in the sanctuary. It's a live stream, but when you're at your home, I want you to bless the Lord and say, praise the Lord. I, have, I am in covenant with the Lord God Almighty through the blood of Jesus Christ. So please, you know, you must look forward to coming back May. May, the first weekend in May is when the sanctuaries will be open for physical services. So go onto the website, begin to book your seats. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm truly excited that we are back in the house of God. Come on. All of you, wherever you are, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for a time that we can really gather together to worship the Lord. Okay, I'm going to continue our study in the book of Revelations, the seven churches. And do you know something? The letters to the seven churches are not to some church 2,000 years ago, but are even more relevant to the church of today as we go towards the end times. Now, I know that a lot of you have booked your places to hear the study of the book of Revelation starting in May by Pastor Chu. But even as we do that, 
I want you us all to realize that the letters to the seven churches will prepare us for the end times. So turn with me to uh, yeah, Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to read from verse 18 to verse 29. Praise the Lord. And all of you who love the Word of God, say Amen. And you can join me to read this in your homes, all right? So verse 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you're now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servant into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I've given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say <clears throat> to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on, hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I've received authority from my father, I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. And Heavenly Father, may you bless the reading of your word. And may the words that the Spirit is saying to us go deep within us. Do you know as we read all the letters to the seven churches, Jesus is addressing a situation in the church that if they would repent of it, they would recapture what was meant to be theirs. So one of the things we learn that as we read about Thyatira is that this church lost something that was very critical. They lost their spiritual authority. So even as we read that, Jesus is coming to the church and saying to the church, if you do not repent, you will never regain your spiritual authority. And you may ask me, how significant is spiritual authority? Do you know the whole work of Jesus Christ on the cross is to give the church its spiritual authority. And without spiritual authority, a church is as useless as any other human organization. You may say to me, why is that important? And so today, as we study about the church in Thyatira, we're going to look at who is this church? What is this church like? Who was contesting for the spiritual authority? And how did they lose control of their spiritual authority? Notice that the Lord never speaks, never speaks to political leaders, to organizations, no matter how great they are, to great CEOs. He speaks only to his church because everything rises and falls upon the church. So let's look at this church. Turn with me and let's look at verse Okay, verse 18 declares who Jesus is. Jesus comes with eyes as blazing fire, with feet as burnished bronze. And actually, when I read this letter to Thyatira, this church really has, has a searing gaze from the Lord. But more important than that, they were facing the judgment of God. The burnished bronze, feet of burnished bronze, tells us that Jesus is coming here to judge this church. Either they repent and receive grace and mercy, or they will be judged. So it's a serious, a very serious admonition to the church. So what is this church like? So I'm going to read about this church. The church in Thyatira, in verse 19, says, I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that now you're doing more than you did at first. Now, on first glance, this is, we would look at these verses and maybe not marvel at its significance, but it's a very significant church. Number one, the church was known for its works. And these were not just ordinary works. The word ergon suggests that the church was diligent. They were not a careless church. Secondly, this church had love 
And the word love is agape, something that the church in Ephesus did not have. So it had an unfailing love. They had a covenantal love. They had a loyal love for the Lord Jesus. Not only that, it is said that they had faith. And the word faith is pistis. Or what it means is that they had a conviction. Theirs was not just an ordinary faith, a belief system that can, that can be easily shaken. No, they had a deep conviction of who Jesus was. So they had love, agape love. They had a faith of deep convictions. And not only that, they had perseverance. And the word hypomene means that they were steadfast. They were unyielding. No matter how many persecutions came against them, they were steadfast. How then... Could a church like that lose its spiritual authority? Do you know why this church would have had a lot of spiritual authority? There was one more significant thing about this church. Not only did the church have loyal love to Jesus, not only did the church have convictions, deep convictions about Jesus, not only were they willing to be steadfast, but the church had servants of God. Now look at this in verse 20. By her teaching, she misleads my servants. Look at the word my servants. The word my servants is the word my is a possessive pronoun. Something very precious to the Lord. So that's why Jesus comes with great indignation. These are his treasured servants. They are his choice servants because the word servants here is bond slave. Now you may ask, what on earth is a bond slave? In the Old Testament days, when a slave is set free by the master and He's free to do whatever he wants. But there were some slaves who loved their master so much that they began to say, I'm willing to be a slave to my master as long as I live. And they would pierce their ears as a sign that they were born slave of their master. Now, what's the significance? So let's look at what Strong's Concordance says. It says that a doulos, or born slave of the Lord, would be one who gives himself up to another's will those whose service is used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause among men and devoted to another to the disregard of one's own interests. Wow! These are no ordinary members of the church. These are no ordinary pastors of the church. These are no ordinary servants of the Lord. These are born servants. They were willing to lay their life down for the cause of Jesus Christ. The question then is this, and this is where I tremble. When Jesus spoke to the church in Thyatira, this church was about to lose it all. How on earth did that happen? Simply by this one person who was given the name Jezebel. Now, her name may not be Jezebel. It may be a man, it may be a woman. Bible scholars do not know. But she carried a spirit of Jezebel. So let's look at verse 20. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have tolerated that woman Jezebel, underline the word tolerate, who calls herself a prophetess, and by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality. Who on earth is this woman or, that, or man that carries the title of the spirit of Jezebel? Who on earth is Jezebel? So for, this, for us to understand why this contest for spiritual authority was powerful, let's go to look at Jezebel, where she mentioned 1 Kings chapter 16. So I know all of you are great at looking at the Bible and you love your Bible. You know, when you read the Bible, you don't just read the New Testament, you must read the Old Testament because the Old Testament gives a context to the New Testament and the New Testament explains the Old Testament. Amen? So turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 16. And here you hear about a king called Ahab. Ahab comes to the throne, and here we have in 1 Kings 16, verse 31, Ahab not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nadab, but he also married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and began to serve Baal and worship him. And he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. Now look at this. Ahab is the rightful leader, king, with all the authority that God has given him in Israel. Now, we must recognize this. God gives authority to certain figures in the land. And that is very significant. Don't look down upon it. Fathers, you are the authority of your household. Whether you hold on to it, whether you understand it, or whether you misuse it, it's all up to you. Pastors, 
It's not just about running a church. You have been given spiritual authority over your flock. How you use it, whether you want it or not, whether you're able to keep it or not, everything will depend upon you understanding spiritual authority. The church, it has been given spiritual authority. How we use it, how we understand it will affect. Governments have been given authority over a land. And do you know that was exactly what Ahab was given? He had authority over the land. But when he married Jezebel, and who was Jezebel? She was the daughter of the Sidonians, and the Sidonians worshipped Baal. Once he married her, and that is why the trick of Jezebel is to seduce. How does Jezebel control and take over spiritual authority? How does she contest for it? Not by direct confrontation, not by destroying Israel with war, but by seducing the king. Jezebel seduced the king and managed to subjugate him. And as a result of his marriage to Jezebel, Ahab began to worship Baal. Not only did he himself worship Baal, he began to set up Baal altars all over Israel. Now hear this, hear this carefully. Once Ahab, who is the man with all the spirit, all the authority that God had given him as a king, once he gave up his authority to Jezebel, actually he was opening the whole of Israel to Baal worship. That is the seriousness about governments. Whatever decrees are made, it has power. In the same way, the church, if the church does not contest for the spiritual authority, if someone like Jezebel comes in and begins to seduce the church and subjugate it, it has lost its authority. Because Ahab may have all the so-called power, but he was a puppet king. The real power over Israel at that time was Jezebel. So what is the purpose of Jezebel? The spirit of Jezebel only desires three things. Number one, to seduce and to subjugate. Secondly, it desires to dominate. The word dominate, to take over control of the spiritual authority. Because Jezebel recognizes when you rule the spiritual realm, you rule the physical realm. And that is how they lost their spiritual authority and it was taken away from God's servants. Now, how did Jezebel even go further in the time of King Ahab? He went about and he destroyed all the, as many prophets of the Lord as possible so that the voice of God was totally removed. That is the power of Jezebel. In the same way, Jezebel came to the church at Thyatira. And when he came to the church at Thyatira, he, she began to preach. Obviously, she's a powerful preacher, prophesy. And in so doing, seduce, it says mislead. The word mislead is to seduce. Now, look at this. Jezebel was not interested in destroying the church. She did not go all out to persecute the church. In fact, it's a very interesting thought. If you look at all the seven churches in Revelations, the churches that went through persecution remained strong. It was the churches that came under deceptive tactics of the evil one, the seductive ways of the evil one that they fell. So even as she seduced them into sexual immorality, the sexual immorality opened the door towards idolatry, just like Ahab. And that is why it is a serious thing. So how did she do it? How did she manage to seduce these Born slaves, born servants of the King Jesus, of the Lord Jesus. How did she do it? Ah, the way she gained control and how the control was lost was because, look at verse 20. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. Look at the word tolerate. The word tolerate in Strong's Concordance is to permit. It's not to Constrain. It is to allow. It is to lose control. Whatever, if you are the father of a house and you allow all kinds of things to happen in your house, all kinds of words to be spoken, actually you have lost control of the atmosphere of your home. If as churches, we begin to tolerate certain types of teachings or certain types of actions, we have lost control. We have given up our control, our dom our dominion over the spiritual realm. And how did they do it? This is what happened. She was a, she was a, she was a teacher. 
She was a prophetess. Basically, the first thing they did, the elders or the pastors or the leaders of this church, they, they tolerated her by giving her a platform. Teaching is a powerful platform. Preaching is a powerful platform. The pulpit is a powerful platform, which is why in SIB, at the opening of Bangunan Yin, Pastor Chu consecrated this platform of preaching and teaching the Word of God so that, so that this would not be given away to just anyone that comes along. In the same way, I want to say this. She was prophetic, right? And where do prophecies arise most? In the prayer altars, which is why I begin to realize that unless pastors are leading their prayer ministry in their church, actually, you're opening the platform to all kinds of things coming in. And that's why church, the early church in Acts 6, never gave up the word and prayer to any other people except the apostles. Why? Because once you open up that platform, you're opening up a gateway for the enemy who may come, I'm not saying it comes all the time, but who may come to cause discord or cause a wrong teaching. The second thing is that they permitted sexual immorality. And I want to say this. In almost every tactic of the evil one, he starts with introducing sexual immorality. And in today's world, this is like, how can we even talk about this? How can we be abhorrent? How can I be abhorrent when I hear that Christian girls, single girls, are having affairs with Christian married men inside the church? How can I begin to raise up my hands in horror? Why should I not defend this territory? Do you know some time ago, it was a very sad case. I think it's about four years ago. I don't know how long ago. But people, uh, some of the members came to me and alerted me that four leaders of the church, they were about to have a divorce because their marriage was bad. And of course, they never told me. They never told anyone. But they were on the brink of going to the legal, uh, to the lawyers to do a divorce papers. When I heard it, this is what happened. Because this spirit of sexual adultery, of fornication is so prevalent in the church today, actually, I also said, actually, what can I do? There are so many cases of this in the church. The moment I say, what can I do? I have tolerated an entry of sexual immorality. Do you know something? Actually, I really said, what can I do? So I was going to like ignore it because I was saying to myself, there are so many of these cases. What else can I do? It's so prevalent. That night, it's very interesting, the Lord woke me up at 3 a.m. and He literally woke me up and rebuked me. Praise God for that. You know, when God rebukes us, that is the biggest mercy of God. He woke me up and He said to me, how dare, look at the words of the Lord, how dare you do not stand against this spirit. How dare you say to me, what can you do? Wow, when the Lord said that, I literally shuddered. Now, you and I may say, wow, it sounds so fierce, it sounds so intolerant. I want to tell you what intolerance, true intolerance in the presence of the Lord looks like. There and then, I began to intercede for the next few days. Every night, I would wake up in the middle of the night, praying through these names, crying out to God for forgiveness and to give me an opportunity to call them up. And the Lord said to me, even if they hate you, you have to do something about this. And because of the reprimand of the Lord and the seriousness of the Lord, I began to really intercede for them. And I called them up one by one. And do you know what happened? You see, once we no longer allow the Spirit to come in and attack our people and we stand in the gap for them, actually, the enemy flees. Do you know out of the four, all three marriages were recovered and today they are very, very happily married. And not only that, wow, their marriage is leader material, leadership material. The one that I couldn't do anything actually has left the country. But what God has taught me in this, and I, want, I, I wanted to share this to all of us, especially as leaders of the church, do not give in to the seductive spirits of the world. And the spirit of Jezebel is not just sexual immorality. It is idolatry. Look at the churches in the West. What have they lost? They have lost their spiritual authority. But you may say to me, 
what actually is the purpose of spiritual authority? And this is where I want you to go back and understand what Jesus said to Peter. When Peter said, who am I? And says, you are Christ, the son of the living God. So turn with me. Let's look at Matthew chapter 16 and look at this powerful verse in verse 18 and 19. I say to you, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. What a powerful authority. What a powerful thing. The first reason why Jesus died on the cross to give us total victory is that we might dominate the spiritual realm. When you dominate the spiritual realm, it means you have the keys, you have the power, you have the control. And it is a powerful thing. Whatever we forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Parents, if you forbid your children to say certain types of words, if you forbid your children to have certain types of practices, heaven supports you and sokong you. Pastors is the same. Whatever we forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. But whatever we allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. You may say to me, how come God has no power to annul that? Ah, we always forget the heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to men, Psalm 115. And this is why, actually, all authority has power. Whoever we open the doors of our house, of our churches, of our cities to, that power will reign in the land. So if we don't worship the Lord, if we forget that we don't even care about coming to church, which is why we want to open physical church, we want people to come back to church, we want people to come back and worship the Lord. But if we allow ourselves, if the people of God allow themselves to be lulled into, I don't know what the Spirit's called, into complacency, into dullness, as oh, no need to go to church now, so boring, so hard to connect online. The more we do that, the more the enemy has been allowed into Malaysia. That is what the firewall is all about. It's standing at the wall, taking dominion and saying, we declare to the principalities that Jesus is king over our nation. Amen? What we allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. What we do not allow in, on earth will not be allowed in heaven. Second reason, why is it that we must also have spiritual authority. Number one is to dominate the spiritual realm. So everyone, quickly type in to dominate the spiritual realm. If you are having lots of problems with spiritual forces of darkness in your home, take authority. Go back and take authority. Secondly, it is to overcome. Now, the word overcome is important. What are we meant to overcome on earth? Overcome all the power of the enemy. The scorpions, it says here, overcome. Snakes and scorpions. Even, oh Lord, trampling even on the snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And that is why we want to encourage churches. We want to encourage even the whole of Malaysia churches. Incidentally, the, when Jesus spoke to the church at Thyatira, I'm sure there were more than one house churches. I'm sure it is many. What he means is that spiritual authority must be co contained by all the churches in Thyatira. It's not just one church. That is why the firewall is about raising up churches throughout the state of Selangor, throughout the state of Sabah, Sarawak, Penang, Johor, everywhere, so that we will now dominate the spiritual territory and we will be able to overcome all the power of the enemy. And that is why in the firewall, there's this powerful prayer that we have asked everyone to take up 15 minutes slots, to take up your position of spiritual authority and to proclaim it in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my sins and the sins of my nation. And with one voice, we declare, deliver us from COVID-19. Heal our land. Send revival. Whoa, that is how God wants us to overcome even COVID-19. Do you know what? Let's all get onto that firewall and let's all declare this so that Malaysia will never have a resurgence of COVID-19. How many of you want that? Come on. How many of you want that? I think all of us want that. Amen. For the sake of our nation, let's all do that. Who can do that? It is the church of God. Governments cannot do that. Organizations cannot do that. Doctors cannot do that. But the church has been given spiritual authority. The third purpose of spiritual authority is simple. Once you dominate the spiritual realm, 
once you overcome all the darts and fiery darts of the evil one, then you can advance God's kingdom. That is why Jesus says, I have given you authority. Go and make disciples of all nations. And that is why the way to regain spiritual authority is to come back to God. All right? Once we regain spiritual authority, we will have dominion in the spiritual realm. And when you have dominion in the spiritual realm, you can war against, you can overcome all the fiery darts of the evil one. And the gospel can now advance because the spiritual realm is now controlled by the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's look, go back to Revelations. How do we regain spiritual authority? Look at this. Let's go back to it. Verse 24. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to a teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, verse 25, hold on to what you have until I come. And to him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my Father. Now look at this. The only thing needed to regain spiritual authority is hold on to what you already have. What is it that the church already has? We just celebrated Good Friday and Easter. And Good Friday and Easter is a powerful proclamation of all that Jesus has done. So I'm going to say to all of you who are here this morning, what is it that we already have? The finished work of Jesus on the cross. When we took communion just now, as I took my communion cup, I actually said to myself, wow, there is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Do you know something? One drop of Jesus' blood announces every demonic curse, breaks down every chain of darkness, overcomes all the power of the enemy. Only if you and I now come back in covenant with God. Holding on is not just holding on a cup. It's holding on in covenant with the Lord. Do you know something? The word teletestai, I love it when Pastor Jeffrey shared it at, at length. Three things it means. It is finished. What is finished? The debt of sin has been fully paid. Therefore, there's no longer any accusation that Satan can lavish against us, can come against us. The debt of sin is fully paid. Number two, the sentence of death has been fully served. The sentence of death has been fully served. Come on, everyone, type it in. The sentence of death has been fully served. Death has no more any victory over us. Number three, the victory has been fully won. Satan is defeated. Jezebel is defeated. If only we come back into covenant with him and begin to do his will. Do you know, let's go back to see how Jezebel was defeated in the Old Testament, shall we? Jezebel was defeated by one servant of the Lord called Elijah. And I want you to look at, follow me. I want you to follow me. How can we come back to regain our spiritual authority? Number one is to come back in covenant. Here is just, uh, Elijah. Elijah has spent time building his strong relationship with God. And even as he comes in 1 Kings 18 to confront Jezebel, this is what he does. So turn with me, 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'm going to first of all read verse 30 and 31. Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. And Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. What is the significance of the altar? Just in case some of you say, I'm not that type, I'm not prayer type, you better be that type. You better be that type. The place of the altar is the place of the renewal of covenants. Every wicked, unholy altar is powerful. You know why? Because at the unholy altar, the forces of darkness are invited back in and the people who worship darkness renew their covenants with the devil. Now, people of God, when you and I come onto that altar, only 15 minutes, and we declare who we are, chosen in Christ, before the beginning of the world, to be holy and blameless before Him. We are renewing our covenant with the Lord. That is significant. Now, second thing about Elijah. Look at Elijah now. Look at it. Verse 36 
at the time of sacrifice, that means at the time of the altar. You may say you have no time, you better sacrifice time. There's power in sacrifice. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Now, stay, just pause there for a while. The word, I am your servant, is the same word as we saw just now in Revelation chapter 2. The same word Elijah used is he calls himself a bond slave of the Lord God Almighty. He was going to go for the Lord, you know, just as a, a song that we worship just now. Everything he laid down, he makes room for God and he surrenders himself to God. God would be, the Lord Almighty would be his master. He was the bond slave. And number two, what did he do? I have done all these things at your command. Just like the church in Thyatira. What was the church in Thyatira supposed to do? Hold on to the teachings. You don't have to learn all the secrets of, of uh, Satan thing that is so special. You don't have to. You have teletestai. You have it is finished. You have the blood of Jesus Christ. You have the victory completely won. You have your debt completely served, uh, uh, completely forgiven. You have the sentence fully served. What more can you want? Now, do the will of my Father in heaven. Do you know one of the most important things churches must learn? It's not just to run programs. Not every program is in accordance with the will of God the Father. I told the pastors in our church, the most important thing for us as pastors leading our church is for us to spend time with God and ask, what is the will of God for His church at this moment? And do you know something? Busy as I am, schedule tight as I have, I have decided that the will of God my Father at this season for me is to build the firewall. Therefore, I give time for it. Not because I have time, but because it's the will of my Father. Because when I walk as a covenant servant of God, in the will of my Father, something changes, something shifts. So look at Elijah. So he says to them, answer me. Wow, he stands as the servant of the Lord, doing the will of God his Father. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you're turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burnt up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and licked up the water in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He's God. The Lord, He's God. And Elijah commanded them. See, it's about spiritual authority. He took over spiritual authority. Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. And they seized them. And Elijah slaughtered them in the Kishon Valley and regained spiritual control for Israel. Brothers and sisters, this morning, God is saying to the church, do not be deceived. Do not be seduced into sexual immorality, into idolatry. Come back. Come back. Re restore our covenant with the Lord. Today, taking communion is not just taking communion. It's not just about diseases. It's about authority. As we regain that covenant with the Lord, begin to serve the Lord, begin to say, Lord, what was your will for my life? And as the church does that, the path of darkness is pushed back. Do you know God showed me this? The power over Malaysia will be the altars. When the altars of prayer are risen up, in many of these altars, it's not just prayer, it's declarations, it's worship, it's restoring a covenant with the Lord. As the people of God in Malaysia rises up to do that, the Lord began to show me this. It's just powerful. There was one morning as I was praying, and this came to me. Fire will come from heaven to burn up our altars, the sacrifice we offer. And that is how revival will come to Malaysia. Amen? Amen? Come on. If you want to do that, why don't you rise with me and we worship God. We tell the Lord, here we bow before Him. Here we bow before Him. We will hold on to our Lord Jesus Christ. We will hold on to this covenant of promise. We will say there's power in the blood of the Lamb. One drop of the blood send one million demons fleeing. One drop of the blood will banish will announce every curse that the evil one passes against us. Amen? Come on, let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Come on, wherever you are, stand up. Strong, to come on. Lift you high, come on. Jesus, we glorify Jesus. Be oh, we glorify in our homes. We glorify in our city. We glorify in our churches.
full of victory because of what you have done, O oh Lord Jesus. We stand before you in absolute surrender to you, our Master and our King. You are our Saviour and our Lord. And we thank you, we are in covenant with you to the blood of the Lamb. Today, O oh Lord, we proclaim to everyone here in this nation that here are the servants of the living God. Lord, may you bless each and every one of your people. May they rise to that full authority that you have given them. May they take dominion over the spiritual realm so that thy kingdom may come, thy will will be done on earth in Malaysia as it is in heaven. And if you want that in your home, say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. If you want that in your church, say yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my home as it is in heaven. And Lord, we thank you for this day. And Father, Lord, Father, Lord, we thank you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us before his throne, blameless and with exceeding great joy. To him alone be all power, all glory, all majesty and authority. Forever and ever. Amen. Come on, wherever you are, give Jesus a big round of clap offering. Say, thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the authority. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We want to welcome you to come into our chat rooms. You know, even if you want to come to our chat rooms just to chat, it's fine. You don't always have to come with a need. But if you have a need, we want to be there for you. Remember, the church is here to set captives free. Amen. So do come in and we're here. We're more than delighted to meet you, to talk to you, to pray for you. And for those of you who are new, please join, go into the chat and, and sign up for the Connect. You know, you will get some gifts from us. You are going to get some things from Pastor Isaac. And do get ready to come back to the physical church in May. And join us next week. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. If you would like to give, you can go to this giving link and all the giving details will be there for you. Thank you for sowing into God's kingdom this season. You are a blessing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay connected for the latest content. Follow us on our social media platforms at SIBKL Church on Facebook and Instagram. You can also visit our website at sibkl.org.my for more info about our church. Stay updated on the latest sermons on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.
Let's sing together in one voice. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come.